Today we're painting messy watercolor lettering in Procreate, packed with watery textures, bleeding colors, and some splashy paint splatter. We'll be using my Messy Watercolors brush set for this project, and I'll leave a link to a free sampler set of brushes in the video description if you'd like to try them out first. The color palette for this project is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen and let's begin. Okay, I've got my brand new canvas and for this entire project, we're actually only going to be using two colors. So I've got my dark blue color selected first for the lettering. Just make sure you're on layer one. I'm going to go into my brushes. This brush set comes categorized into eight different categories and this is the way that I have arranged them. I've got messy extras up at the top. So I'm going to select that brush set within this master collection of watercolor brushes. And in this category are all of your painting brushes and textures. So I'm going to grab the Tuesday water brush to put my lettering in first. So I'm just going to write the word water, but feel free to write whatever you'd like. I've got my lettering and now I'm just going to center it on the canvas. And the next thing I'm going to do, so this is my main lettering layer and I can label this one water. Next I'm going to create a brand new layer right above that and then apply a clipping mask. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. And now we're going to add in the other color to different areas of this. So we'll have some variation in color. So I'm going to come to my colors, grab this teal color, and I still have my water brush selected. And I'm just going to choose a few sporadic places to add this extra color. So I'm going to put a little bit right here. I'll put some near the A, uh, maybe a little on the crossbar of the T, and have it move into the E right here. So that'll be a nice little area, and I'll also have it come into the R, maybe just a little bit at the base of the R. And then once we have that, we're going to smudge this. So I'm going to grab my smudge tool, and in the messy extras category, choose the bloom and bleed brush, and I'm just going to push this around a little bit so I can get rid of these harder edges and have it transition nicely into the blue. Next, I'm going to smudge areas of my lettering to make them a little bit softer and add that watery effect. So I'm going to come back into my layers, head into the water layer, and I'm going to push some of this color out. So push this edge. Whenever I'm deciding where I'm going to smudge or push the color out, I always want to make sure that I'm not going to affect the readability of the word when it comes to lettering. So when you're making your choices like this A, I want to make sure that it's still distinguishable as an A. So I won't smudge too much, but enough to get that effect in there. I also want to smudge out the T, but I have a plan. This part's going to become a little more difficult readability wise, but I kind of have a plan in mind to solve that. And I want to show you what that is. I'll add a little bit more over here. Any types of little flourishes you have are really good opportunities because it won't mess with the readability and it'll call a lot of attention to those prettier aspects. Okay, I don't wanna to go too overboard, but I think that's still very readable. And you can see where I have this extra color in some of these places, like this doesn't look that great. So I'm going to head back into that layer and just smudge those areas out so they transition much nicer and you can't even tell that there were any hard edges in there. Next, we're going to start adding in all those really beautiful textures to make this look like messy watercolor. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. The first thing I want to do is find some really transparent washes. And since a lot of the action is going to happen in the center, I want to focus on this first and then I can add in the extra details on the edges. So I need a really big wash and I think I want the color of it to be green since I've got green areas right here and green areas right here. So I'm going to keep that greenish tealish color selected, head into my brushes, go into the category of washes, messy washes, it's underneath the messy extras, that's where I've placed it. And down here in the middle of the wash category, there's a bunch of really soft washes. So I want one that expands pretty far. These ones are a little more squarish in shape and I want something that's a bit more organic here. So I'm going to grab wash 18 and see how this works. Make sure you're stamping these ones in with your finger. That'll guarantee full opacity and then you can move and manipulate it with your stylus. So that actually works pretty well. I've got a little bit coming down here where I had the smudge and then I've got this one coming up here. I might want to rotate it just a little bit 
So I capture that edge right along the T. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this to linear burn. So it blends really dark right there. And you can see how that's starting to give us that messy effect. I don't like this line coming up here. So I'm going to smudge that out using that bloom and bleed brush that we were just using. And I can push this a little tighter and I like how the rest of that is looking. Let's add in some more textures now. I want to capture this blue and maybe have another one that comes up around here. So I'm going to use blue, but I'm going to grab the color that's in here, which will be a little bit different than from my color palette. It's a little bit softer. And I'm going to grab another soft wash. Let's try wash 24, create a brand new layer, and remember to stamp it in with your finger. That one's too small, so let's increase the size. I'm gonna come up to 25%. You just wanna make sure it doesn't bleed off of your canvas. If it's too large, then you're gonna crop your edges. So I like how this one is kind of billowing off of the bottom of the T, so I'm looking at the texture and seeing how I can work with what I've already got. So let's rotate this a bit and see what we can do here. All right, I also like how it's kind of coming into the A right down here, and I like how this is looking, that bottom part of the T. I don't like the big gap that I have right here, uh, so let's rotate this just a little bit and see if we can close that up. It looks like we can. I'm still getting that nice area of the A, and this is coming down, and I'm blending into the other spots. So I like how that looks. I'm going to leave it right there, and let's change the blend mode. I wanna see if linear burn will be too dark, or if I wanna go with multiply, which is like a softer version of that. I like the darker version, so I'm gonna keep with linear burn. And I think it could actually be even darker, so I'm going to duplicate that layer. And that's a little too dark, but I can reduce the opacity so it's not so intense. So I'm gonna come down to like 25%. You can see the before and after. It's just a little bit of extra darkness, and now I can pinch those two layers together and then smudge the areas that don't look quite as great where they're overlapping. I like leaving a few areas, like this edge I think is a little too hard, so I'm going to smudge that, but still leave a few areas that poke through that are hard, just to mimic that real watercolor look. So we've got some nice messy watercolor going on right now. I don't like this little gap in the texture, so I'm going to smudge that out, maybe right here as well. Now let's take care of this edge. So I'm going to keep my blue. Let's grab a different shade of blue. Create a brand new layer. Let's try wash 27 over here. So remember to stamp it in with your finger and then you can rescale, move and manipulate. I'm going to reflect this one. So flip horizontally and I think that looks nice. Let's change the blend mode of this to linear burn. I like the look of that. This area up here is a nice extra detail. And I think I can just, I'm getting a nice hard line down here that goes along with this smudge. So I'm just gonna leave that one just like that. Next, let's take care of the W. I'm going to grab a middle color of where these two blended together, create a brand new layer. I'll just change the blend mode to linear burn right away. And let's try wash 20 and see what we get out of this one. Reduce it down. I'm trying very hard to not let any of my textures bleed off the side. So I'm watching that edge pretty carefully, but I really like how that dark area is hitting the top of the W. So I wanna keep that, but it might be better to reduce this down just a little bit. So it fits right in there. There we go. And I'm going to duplicate that wash and then reduce the opacity. I'm gonna come down to 50% and then merge those two together and then smudge them out a bit. I really like these details in here. So I talked before about how the T gets a little bit lost. So I wanna show you a nice trick when you've got a line that extends that's a little too blurry. I'm going to grab that teal, create a brand new layer, and we're going to head into the blooms. And I've got a few straight blooms that'll work really well, and even some curved ones that could also work. So looking through here, I think I wanna try bloom 13. So stamp it in with my finger, and I can move it into position and now change the blend mode to linear burn and see if that's too intense or not. And now it's having that more bloom look that looks more natural 
than a line. You can see that beautiful area of color right here mixing with the water. So I just need to fix these harder lines using the smudge brush and now it all looks like it goes together and that that was always part of the crossbar. And then the top of the E, we can do something similar over here. So this one's gonna be a lighter color, create a brand new layer, and I have some curved ones in here. So we can try the super curved one, Bloom 12, and we'll see how that works. Let's change the blend mode of it to linear burn. And I am creating a brand new layer. Every single time I stamp in a texture, this gives me more control. If I need to change anything later on, I can just find the texture and move it. It's not attached to any other textures. So it's a really good habit to get into. This one I'm going to have to scale down considerably so it fits in here. Okay, and then smudge this so it blends a little bit better. I'm going to duplicate that layer and reduce the opacity to 40%. And we'll see how that looks. Let me smudge part of it out a little bit more. I think it's a little too defined for such a watery area. So I think that helps a lot. And now you can still tell it's an E. I think I need a little bit more color over here. So I'm just gonna push with the smudge brush. So now let's add in some splashes and splatters and that'll finish this off. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. Let's grab the blue from the color palette and head into our splashes. And I'm going to grab splash 16. Stamp it in with your finger. I'm going to reflect it, so flip horizontally. And I'm going to have this one go right along the T to add extra texture to it. Smudge it out. So for this one, I just smudge in a few areas so I still get some of those nice hard lines within it. And I'll smudge out some of these dots too because I'm in a watery area. So maybe these ones are mixing in some water that hasn't totally dried yet. If you'd like to learn more about creating messy watercolor digital art in Procreate, I just released a brand new course called Messy Watercolors in Procreate, and I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description to that course. Okay, I've got that texture in there. Let's change the blend mode of this one to multiply. I think linear burn would be too intense and just reduce the opacity a little bit. I'm gonna come down to 75%. We've got a little bit of texture happening now and let's grab the teal color next and add in some splatters. So create a brand new layer. Let's head into the splatters category and I'm gonna try splatter four. Stamp it in with my finger. I think I want it a little bit bigger. 22% and then I can move and manipulate and rescale as needed. That looks pretty good. I'm going to reduce the opacity and change the blend mode to, let's go linear burn with this one. And the opacity is gonna come down to about 50%. And then I can smudge some of these areas and I can even erase some areas if it feels like there's just too much going on. Okay, and then I think I need just a little bit of splatter on the beginning of the word and the end of the word. So I'm going to use a splatter brush for that. So create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my blue again, head back into the messy extras category and grab the lots of splatter brush. And I'm going to increase the size to 35%. And I'm just going to tap once and I've got this big splatter that comes in and then I can rescale and move and manipulate it. It's a really quick way to get splatter if you don't want to sit and search for one of the textures. So I'm going to plant that one right there and then I'll create a brand new layer and add another one in. Same thing as before, smudge or erase away any that you don't want. Okay and I'm going to change both of those blend modes to multiply. We've got some nice messy watercolor lettering and the last thing I want to do is just add on a paper texture so it looks like it was created traditionally. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top, change the blend mode to multiply, change my color to black by double tapping where the black is, go into the messy extras category and I'm going to grab watercolor paper number one at the bottom 
zoom out of my canvas, size is at max, and paint over the entire canvas to add in that paper texture. And you can see that paper texture appearing. If you want it to be more obvious, just duplicate that layer. So duplicate, and if that's too intense, just reduce the opacity to scale it back a bit. I'm gonna come down to 50%, so it's like one and a half times instead of two full times. And I can zoom out, and now it looks much more realistic. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next week.